Stay or leave? Go for it or don't go for it? This job offer or this job offer? Decisions can be tough. And if you're like me, you tend to overthink things until the decision is just this muddled pile in your brain and you don't know what path you want to take going forward. Lenormand to the rescue! In this video, I'm going to show you my favorite go-to decision spread using Lenormand. This is good news for beginners because you do not need to be an expert to do this spread. If you're new here, welcome. My name's Emily Rose. I teach tarot readers and the mystically minded to read Lenormand like they're talking to a friend. In this video, we're going to do the decision spread together and you can ask your own question. You're going to need a few things for this video. So first things first, you are going to need a Lenormand deck. The next thing that you're going to need is a decision. This can be a massive decision. This could be something like, should I buy this house or should I not? It could be something really minuscule as well. It could be something like, should I wear this outfit or this outfit to the wedding? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just have some decision that you want to try. And last but not least, if you are a tarot reader or an oracle card reader, have a deck of those handy as well because if you stick around until the end of the video i'm going to share with you some ways to incorporate tarot or oracle cards and this is just going to add another layer of depth to your decision spread this video is beginner friendly but you ne do need to have just a teensy bit of lenormand knowledge what you need to know specifically are the cards polarity if you're thinking, Emily, I don't know what you mean by card polarity. All I mean is that you need to know which cards are positive, which cards are negative, and which cards are neutral in Lenormand. But Emily, I don't know which ones are positive, negative, and neutral. Don't worry, I have you covered. If you head to emilyrosedivination.com slash mini course, I'll send you my free Lenormand mini course. You don't actually need to go through the mini course for this video, but inside that workbook that you'll be sent, there is a free cheat sheet. So make sure you head there to grab that free cheat sheet if you're not sure about which cards are positive, negative, and neutral, and I will tell you there. Okay. I'll give you a minute to collect those things. Got them? Let's make a decision, baby. Okay, so before we get started, I wanna just briefly walk you through how to do a decision spread. I'm gonna put the little steps right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to center ourselves. We're gonna find a place of calm. The next step is to clearly delineate the decision that's in front of you. I recommend, especially for your first few decision spreads, picking a decision that only has two options available. And the reason why you want to do that is because the next step is to shuffle your cards. And after you shuffle, you want to really picture yourself being in each option. So the first thing you're going to do is picture yourself being in option A completely and fully. Okay, so that could be if you're debating between two jobs. You have a job offer at job A. Put yourself in that situation. You really picture yourself being there. You picture yourself accepting the offer. You picture yourself walking in the door. Okay, really put yourself in that option. And then you would do the same thing for job B when you go to pull cards for it. Once you clearly delineate each option, you're going to put yourself there and then pull three to five cards. I recommend three to five. You could go as high as seven, but I would say three to five is generally all you need. And then we interpret them, which is something we're going to do together in a minute. So let's go ahead and do this together. So I want you to grab your Lenormand deck. Any Lenormand deck will do. I'm using the Rana George Lenormand. And I want you to close your eyes, take a deep breath in and out. And remember, you are ultimately in control of the decisions you make. Please let this just be an aid that you use in combination with your own intuition. 
Okay. And then go ahead and whatever your card process is, I like to shuffle my cards at this point. So you shuffle like this. Go ahead and shuffle your cards. And once your cards are good and shuffled, I want you to go ahead and put yourself in option A, that first choice. Really picture yourself in that decision. And when you're ready, go ahead and pull three to five cards for that decision. Go ahead and lay out your cards for option A. Okay. And then go ahead and picture yourself in option B. Really put yourself there just like you did for the last one. And when you're ready, go ahead and pull cards for option B and lay them next to what you pulled for option A. Okay, and then you can lay your cards out for option B. Once you have your cards, go ahead and put them in the comments and feel free to interpret in that comment box there so you can kind of keep track of things as you're going. And at the end too, if just do your best to interpret. If you need help, go ahead and let me know. And I try to answer every comment. So if you need help, let me know what your interpretation is, what you think it is, and then let me know where, where you need some help or if you just want me to take a look. Now let's chat about interpreting our decision spread. The cards that you see here are from a spread that I did earlier in the week. And what I am wanting to know is whether I should rejoin this mastermind that I've been a part of. It's basically like a, like a group and a coaching group for intuitive entrepreneurs, or if I should not rejoin it. It's a sizable investment, but I definitely got my money's worth <laughs> on the last time. And so I'm thinking about rejoining or I'm wondering if I got everything I need to get out of it. It is really helpful for me to know the context if you want help with actually interpreting the line itself of what it means. So if you can, please put in the comments as well what your decision is that you're debating about and drop that in there so I can, I can help with some context with interpreting. So the first thing I like to do is just really quickly take a glance at your reading and see which one looks and feels the best. So I went ahead and laid each option out uh, horizontally instead of vertically so it'll fit in the picture here. Mine looks pretty clear <laughs> just looking at this. You look at if you already know which cards are positive, negative, all of that. If you already have that in the back of your brain, you can literally just take a glance at it and you probably already know which option looks better for you. So you know, just at a quick glance looking at mine, I can tell that option A, which is to rejoin, looks far better than option B, which is not rejoining. Okay, so let's look at option A here. So we have the stars, the heart, the bed, the dog, and the key. So we have the stars, which is positive, heart, which is positive. The bed card, this is a bonus card from the Rana George Lenormand. I would say this is neutral to positive. We'll just call it a neutral. And then we have the dog, which is positive. And then we have the key, which is, in my opinion, the most positive card in the deck. Some people would say it's the sun. I think it's the key. Here we go. We have 
pretty much all positive cards. The bed, you could argue, is, is neutral. But all positive cards in the top row. In the bottom row here, for this would be not rejoining, we have the cross, which is negative. We have the book, which is neutral. Clouds, which is negative. We have the bouquet, which is positive. And we have the house card, which is neutral. Even if you're a total beginner, you can absolutely do this because all you have to do is tally up the positive cards, the negative cards, the neutral cards, and you can see which decision comes out on top. So in most cases, it's going to be pretty obvious with which option looks the best. If you get the key in a decision spread reading, especially if it's at the end like this, it's very obvious. It's like, that's the answer. This is the decision to make. So for me, this was a very easy <laughs> and obvious decision that rejoining looks the best. So if you're a beginner, you can just stop there. You don't even have to interpret anything if you don't want to, and that can give you your decision. That being said, I would definitely pay attention to, you know, are we ending on a positive note? Are we starting on a positive note? And then it gets negative, right? So pay attention to that. But at its most basic level, you can interpret decision spreads that way. Okay, so if we look at the top row here, I mean... It's pretty obvious, like, yes, this is the answer, but, you know, you probably want to read into it a little bit more. For interpreting five-card spreads, the first two cards kind of affirm the context. So I, I look at the stars as future, future planning, things like that in the heart. And I, this is saying, like, I'm getting, like, an enjoyable future. Rejoining, I know, would be enjoyable. I know I would enjoy it. I know I would like it, right? That's kind of affirming our context. And it helps a lot with future planning. Then we look at the center card. We have the bed. I'm comfortable there. Then we have the dog, which is support. This is probably the person who's organizing it. And then we have the key card at the end. And this is saying like she unlocks things. She has answers. <laughs> she helps, right? So this to me looks pretty obvious um, when it when it comes to this. Now let's look at not rejoining option B. So let's go ahead and look at option B here. So the first two cards are affirming our context. So this is like figuring out how to deal with your challenges and burdens, right? Right now I have a community of people that help me with that. I feel very supported in that. This is kind of saying, eh, you're going to have to figure this stuff out. We have the clouds here, which is saying the main thing. So this is kind of being everywhere, being disorganized, being doubtful, not really sure, you know, what's going on <laughs> all the time. But then at the end here, this is kind of the outcome. I'm seeing that this could bring some benefits to my home life, mainly because I'm not, um, I might be more free at home. I might have more time freed up. Um, we're not quite sure what it is because it's not illuminating that here, but we can see that there's going to be some type of benefit to my home life. This could also be money wise, saving some money, you know, things like that. There is some benefit here, but it's the main feeling of it is the clouds where the main feeling up here is the bed. It's comfortable, right? Just looking at this spread, it's pretty obvious that option A is the way to go. So that's your basic decision spread right there. Now, I don't usually stop here. You can obviously stop here. You get a clear answer. But I like to get more information. So in my opinion, Lenormand is typically accurate for about one year to 18 months. But sometimes I want to know what it's going to feel like long term. And this is where I turn to my trusty friend, Tarot. You can also use Oracle cards. But I like to pull a Tarot card for how a decision is going to feel in the long run. What's the overall feeling in the long run? And I tend to get... I tend to get a card that's very descriptive and helps me understand what that decision is going to feel like. So for option A, I got the Queen of Pentacles. 
And this makes a lot of sense. I'm, I'm growing my intuitive business garden, right? It's feeling good. So this looks pretty good for me to go with option A. I love having the queen of pentacles there. I feel like I'm creating my own queendom here. The queen of pentacles is someone who is financially secure. She is in this garden that took time to grow, but she's happy here. And I think that's something that's important to note is that things don't happen overnight. They take a while, but you'll be happy with what you grow. Now I drew a card as well for option B and I got the eight of swords. So this to me is a lot like the clouds, like book clouds. I feel like this combination feels a lot like the eight of swords. It's kind of like perceived helplessness when really you're not helpless at all. She can take her blindfold off and cut these things away anytime she wants. That's kind of what I feel about, about this here. It's like, you know what to do, but you might be stuck in your own stuff. <laughs> so that's there uh, for the overall effect of not rejoining. You can even add more cards as well. I especially recommend continuing to draw cards if you kind of get an equal amount of positive and negative and neutral. If it kind of works out to be a wash for you, then you can continue to pull additional cards. So for instance, if you're deciding between jobs, we'll just keep going with that. If you're deciding between jobs, for example, you may want to decide what is the most important factor for me when it comes to a workplace, right? And so maybe it is like, you want to know how you're going to get along with your coworkers. Maybe that's a big determining factor for you. If that's the case, then you can pull additional Lenormand cards and ask that. You can say, okay, what is the workplace going to be like at job A? What is the workplace going to be like at job B? You can pull a Normand. And then another option is you can pull additional tarot cards. So some additional tarot questions that I enjoy asking are, so additional tarot questions that I enjoy asking, I like to just ask generally, what will be my best ally in making this decision? What do I need to pay attention to when making this decision? What do I need to avoid when it comes to making this decision. So you can ask all those kinds of questions. You can also just ask about advice as well. So let's say this joining the mastermind obviously looks great rejoining, but if let's say I couldn't rejoin for some reason, then I might ask, okay, what do I need to do to do this on my own, right? What, what can my best action steps be? So I don't feel this <laughs> learn this helplessness feeling, right? How can I avoid that feeling? What can I do? So even if you feel stuck, one decision clearly looks better, but for some reason you can't do that decision anymore or something comes up, it's not all over. You can ask additional questions. Remember, you can go ahead and put in the comments what your decision is that you're working out. What are the two options? Go ahead and write out what you're currently thinking what uh, in terms of your interpretation and let me know if you want some help or if you want some additional insight into your spreads. If you loved this video and you want more, be sure to like and subscribe. And additionally, you can head to emilyrosedivination.com slash mini course to snag my free three lesson Lenormand mini course. It teaches you how to do a daily draw with Lenormand and it comes with an eight page workbook. Additionally, this is going to be a great way to get started reading and start to get you cozy with the cards. Okay, keep on divining everyone. I want to thank you so much for being here.